The C8 Corvette is the hot topic right now since the reveal many many other details are coming out about it. One of which is its weight and size, another is the details of the engine. We're going to cover both of those starting right now with the wheelbase. The wheelbase of the C8 is 107.2 inches. Now that's about a half inch wider than the C7 Corvette, but it is significantly larger than other mid-engine cars like the Audi R8, the McLaren 570, the McLaren 720, and even the Acura NSX. It is almost 11 inches larger than the Porsche 911. Overall, it is 5.3 inches longer than the C7 and 2.2 inches wider, which actually makes it 5.2 inches wider than a Porsche Cayman. Now, fortunately, the Corvette has gone mid-engine, which will dramatically improve performance and really take the Corvette to a whole new level. The downfall is now that it is going to be compared to other mid-engine cars, such as its dimensions and weight. The weight, they gave a dry weight of 3366. Now, after you fill the fluids, everything is on the showroom floor, you're probably going to be close to 3,600 pounds, if not right at 3,600 pounds. That's not exactly lightweight for a mid-engine car, but there's a reason for this. All the other mid-engine cars have no storage space. They have no driver and passenger leg room or headroom. This is where the C8 excels. They purposely made the car longer and wider because you notice there's both trunk space in the front and the rear. It is a significant amount of space. You can put two golf bags in the back and have room in the front for some random items. So this is the reason Chevy went with a much larger scale car than say the Porsche or the McLarens or even the Audi R8. It's all been done for practicality. So yes, the other cars are smaller, they're lighter, they're more nimble, they're more narrow, but then again, you're taking away any and all practicality of the car. Not that I can exactly say the C8 is practical, but there is more space in it. You have more leg room, more headroom, and more cargo space. It is the cheapest mid-engine supercar, and I'm going to start calling the Corvette a supercar at this point, because, let's face it, we've really crossed that line. It is the cheapest mid-engine supercar you can buy. Now, let's talk about the engine. The new LT2 has 11.5 to 1 compression. It also has a higher flow intake manifold and exhaust manifolds. It has a better lubrication system and a slightly different camshaft. It has the same bore, the same stroke, the same forged crank, the same rods. It's all based on the LT1 engine with very little modifications. As for the cam, the intake lobes are the same as the LT1s. The lift on the exhaust is a little bit higher. But the LT2 cam, the phasing alters the intake and exhaust timing a little differently than the LT1. But the rest of the valve train is carried over from the LT1 to the LT2, which is why it remains at a 6600 RPM redline. Now to help add all this extra horsepower, the C8 gets a much higher flowing exhaust manifold and the rest of the exhaust has valves which will open and close, increasing scavenging. Now the horsepower numbers at 495 and 470 torque are with that performance exhaust. If you don't get the performance exhaust, you're at 490 and 465. Still really good numbers, you're only losing five horsepower and five pound feet of torque. The new intake manifold on the LT2 is much taller than the LT1. It has equal length runners that are mounted in a way that now the car breathes from the rear as opposed to the front. What this does is shorten the distance between the throttle body and the intake valves to help improve airflow. Those new exhaust manifolds that I was speaking about a second ago, they're also equal length runners. The LT1 manifolds were kind of a more of an intermediate step design. So this is just an idea of what they've done to change the engine to get this extra horsepower. And now you also have an idea of the overall size and weight of the car. Not exactly a lightweight car compared to most other mid-engine cars, but it does add a lot more practicality than say a Porsche 911 or an Audi R8. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Just a little bit more information on the C8 as it develops. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you next time.